to the Lately in PHP podcast and go. This is episode 85 after a long wait, trying to find time, but uh, finally we could make it this time with Arthur Sossins from the world Latvia. Hello, Arthur. So how are you doing? Good. And with always busy manual lemos. It's really hard to find the proper <laughs> no, it's, time. It's, it's, it's like it's, lately there's been... <laughs> It's, there has not been much PHP, but there's been other related things that are also important. Okay, today we are going to talk uh, several uh, interesting topics, but first we'll start uh, on a sad note about uh, Christian Wieg, the PHP Innovation Award of, uh, winner of the year 2016, that uh, according to his brother, he has died. And we are very sad because he was a great contributor, but we'll talk more about this uh, right after the beginning. Next, we'll start talking about the usual um, developments of the latest PHP versions, not just PHP 7.1, but also, I mean, PHP 7.0 and 7.1, but also PHP 7.2 Alpha that uh, started to have its uh, new releases. Then we start talking about the usual proposals in RFC, starting one to have the retry functionality for exceptions on which you will be allowed to specify um, uh, that uh, one exception can uh, happen multiple times, and if uh, at it happens uh, once, it can be retried and up to a, a limit, meaning that the code that is inside that exception will be uh, run again. Next, we'll talk about a proposal to use Doxygen to document the C sources of PHP, I mean the PHP engine. There, next, we'll have a proposal to be able to specify an offset when on a string that is to be searched, matched with regular expressions with pre-reg match and other, probably other uh, functions of the pre-reg extension. Next, we'll talk about uh, a new um, value for the PHP OS family when you are using the Mac uh os and similar uh os uh, engines i mean uh, versions from apple next uh, we'll talk about a proposal for you uh, supporting the united collection uh, operating for uh, for instance checking uh, if a certain uh, request variable is set and uh, if it is not set the the, the value it, it is Evaluating as null, not just to avoid uh, uh, warnings of undefined variables. Next, we'll have a proposal for inclusion of PCS in PHP 7.2, which would be the ability to mix PHP code and C code to develop PHP extensions. This is interesting, we'll talk more on that. Next, uh, we'll talk about the possibility to have final variables like you have in Java, uh, not just for scalar types of variables, uh, variables, which you can do already using constants, but also for objects, like objects that uh, do not change, despite the, the, the information inside the objects may change. Uh, next, there will be a, a revival of proposal to use a message pack as a binary format for serializing and unserializing uh, data. Uh, uh, currently, use serialize and unserialize functions, but this would be to generate a uh, more efficient format, which would be message pack. Next, we'll talk about some articles that were published on PHP Classes blog, uh, starting one about the 18 years of PHP Classes, just reviewing what happened in the last year in terms of new developments and also the upcoming uh, plans for that will happen around PHP Classes. So, uh, next, we'll talk about uh, several articles, one that is about the best PHP books of 2017 2016 this is just a ranking of books that it generated dynamically so this article will be updated regularly it's not a static article uh, next year probably it will say best php books of 2018 and 2017 and then we'll talk about a couple of other uh, articles that share more tutorials one for importing excel uh, um, into my sql spreadsheets into MySQL, 
with a class that exists on the site, and another is to um, manipulate matrices uh, in P PHP. But today we are here to talk about uh, the latest uh, interesting topics about PHP. But first, we would like to start on, uh, unfortunately, a sad note uh, uh, that um, um, Christian Wieg, uh, the winner of PHP Innovation Award um, uh, of the year 2016, unfortunately, he seems to have died according to a note from his brother, Francois Wieg. Um, it's very sad, he has been a great contributor and um, uh, actually very active. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I just know from his brother that um, he, he, he died. And um, well, uh, I hope he is now in a better place. Mm, it's, it's sad, but he left a great work that helped many thousands of PHP developers with his components and his kindness, his support. Well, unfortunately, uh, over here in the, the planet Earth, we need to continue. And uh, we'll hopefully talk a more um, uh, happier notes uh, regarding the latest PHP developments. But um, and just uh, say that uh, we miss Christian and uh, wherever he's he gone, yeah, I hope he's well and in peace. Um, anyway, moving on to the next topics. Uh, let me just share here. I don't know if, is it sharing? It's loading. Mm. Uh, not right. Yes, it's stuck it, on your picture. Yes, I think I need to share the whole screen because it won't work otherwise. Oh, it's the inception. Uh, uh, are you seeing? Yes, I see. Okay, this is just one. The picture of the on, on a podcasting out that you recorded with Christian B. Um, but okay, let's move on to the actual PHP topics. First, talking about the usual um, latest PHP version developments. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I think. It's not yet. Oh, okay, now it is in the right place. First, talking about PHP 7.1.6. Wait. Actually, PHP 7.0.20. Uh, basically, the, the usual bug fixes, I think these are related to security, if I'm not mistaken. mistaken. Um, I don't see much to talk about about these uh, features. As usual, you should upgrade to the latest PHP versions to avoid these bugs, especially if they affect your code. But they don't seem to be security only related. I think it's general I fixes. I thought too. that it isn't it PHP already secure. About to be released in the next months, or maybe I'm confusing things, <laughs> which could well be. Anyway, uh, yeah, you're probably right because the, the bug fixes for PHP 7.1.6 seem to be very similar, and I'm pretty sure PHP 7.1 is not in security fixes mode. Problem, I'm just confusing uh, PHP 5.6. Yeah, uh, I have not noticed uh, any. A thing worth mention more than the usual. Uh, anyway, what we have now is already some alpha releases for PHP 7.2. Uh, I have not checked it. I hardly have time to <laughs> check the earlier PHP versions, but um, but I will look into this more in the upcoming months because of a, a new project that I'm working on and this will still use PHP 7.x more intensively, if not 7.2 because it is 
still alpha, but uh, 7.1 probably. Mm, we, I'm going to jump ahead uh, to the latest stable version. Makes sense. Um, but uh, for now, I don't have much to say. <laughs> uh, I just know that there have been two alpha releases, so if all goes well, probably the new version will be released around December. Uh, we still have a few months to come, but we know that every month there is a new alpha. Probably beta, and then a release candidate as usual. So that will happen in the next months. Um, now, moving on to the actual features of PHP that have, have been proposed recently. There is a new interesting one for those that are very fans of exceptions. They want to do everything with exceptions, even control uh, statements like uh, loops and conditions. The idea is to have um, a new statement for the try catch, who should be retry. So, as you may see here, if if the there is a certain exception, now you can specify the number of times that the, the exception will be retried. So, if like in this example, recoverable exception happens. Uh, 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 less than three times, it will be retried. So I guess it is, you will iterate. So this is a new form of uh, iteration over code. It, personally, for, for me, it's a bit weird. I, I don't know. Artus, uh, you are more acquainted to JavaScript. Is there anything like this in JavaScript? No, not really. But uh, just recently, I think just last week, uh, we had an interesting incident that uh, we developed some specific uh, uh, functionality for a client, and it all works in our server, but on their servers, internal servers, there is some kind of server misconfiguration, miscommunication, and no, but uh, at least uh, sometimes it just uh, connection is refused and it's not happening. And so what they figured out that if you try to do it like five times, then at least once it will connect. So they asked us to implement a retry logic to establishing connection. And oh, it was not hard to do, but it was not that easy to. So with some uh, similar uh, functionality I provided here, it could would be much easier, but maybe, I don't know, it doesn't mean that it really need, we need really this functionality because it's possible to do it other ways too. Like with loops? Uh, yeah, sort of. While, or, while this doesn't work? like function, function calls. <laughs> it's like, why, why no, try, it's, try less than three? But you would have to use yes, an okay. additional variable to store the number of tries. And function right. probably to, to call the same functionality, yes. Mm. Well, in this example, they already have it, but I think if, yeah, you could like um, put it this around a loop and uh, uh, have some condition to, to, to determine that the, the, this exception happened. Like uh, if uh, recover exception, then try, try again. <laughs> And then, I don't know, probably you could, in PHP, you could just use continue here and put this in, around the big loop. And yes, something like that would work too. And do that to break the, the loop around. So maybe some people prefer it this way because it would be simpler, it would be nicer. I don't know. But you are saying that in JavaScript, in JavaScript you don't have this, right? No, no, nothing like that. Yeah, so for uh, until. The, JavaScript has something like that, you can say, oh, PHP has this. Yeah. It's this innovative thing. Yeah, yeah because there is like this competition and feature by feature. And, well, at least for me, that's what what explains why people are trying to, to uh, stuff more features in the, in the language. Um, OK. Moving on to the next uh, topic, this is about a proposal to use Doxygen to generate uh, documentation. 
from the C sources of PHP. This is not exactly for PHP code. The proposal is to use it uh, to extract documentation from from uh, internal code and uh, internal exceptions. Maybe for uh, uh, sorry extensions, <laughs> and um, maybe for uh, third party extensions too. But this is a proposal that was already rejected. Yeah. Uh, so, we are talking about something that was an idea and it was not accepted, at least for now. I, don't know, I did not follow the outcome or how, why certain people vote against it. Yeah, but I think uh, it should not be really tied to the core or anything like that, because it's just a comment, a style of, of commenting. So, JavaScript has JS doc and they are not completely tied, you just have to pre-process it somehow before like generate this documentation and javadoc okay javadoc is built into ides probably usually uh, yeah. still for php i think there is there was were some php doc or something similar libraries too yeah well i don't know because this uh, people like to use these things probably to make it uh, um, uh, systematic like uh, every, from now on all the documentation will for extension, no. internal things will come from Boxygen. Yeah, I don't say it's from not useful, it's very useful, but, but, but deciding on which style to specifically use should be up to the end user, not implementing in the core. Yeah. Well, uh, I, this is not for PHP code, this is for the, the, the internals of PHP. Oh, I see. The C source, yeah. right? Okay. For other things, there is PHP doc and uh, it's widely used. Um, but anyway, this is re rejected. So for now, if it was a good idea, I'm not sure. I'm going to write code for the PHP core. Maybe it needs to be reviewed uh, later because for now it was rejected. The next proposal that we are commenting about, this seems to be interesting to actually make PHP code more efficient. Uh, if you are using regular expressions to find stuff in a, in um, uh, maybe long strings, uh, for instance, if you are searching uh, some text, you can find multiple instances of a certain pattern. You find the first pattern and move on to the next pattern. So the way you, you use this traditionally is to, to use uh, a substring to extract part of the string that you want to match but this probably is not very efficient and, and probably will uh, uh, require at least some temporary uh, storage that can be a lot so the idea is to introduce a new uh, option that you would flag with this this parameter here and then you pass an offset to tell, oh, this, 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 the search for prereq match would start in a certain sp specific offset of the, the string. So for me, this seems to be a good idea. I'm not sure, but I think I have done this several times. If really? you have, Interesting. yeah, for instance, when you are, we want to parse some text and use. Uh, and you want to find if a certain regular expression is there. Yeah. I think that it could even define a limit. Like if you just want to par uh, to match uh, 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 a portion of the text, the, the limit it from the beginning to the end. Uh, but I don't know how would you pass the, the length here. Probably have another parameter and I'm not sure if this function call actually become a bit messy, mm -hmm. but I think that but, is good. But to do that, you would need to know that the text have some prefixes or something like that, that you have no use of them. So just interesting what could be the specific real life case. For example, I, I assume you are parsing URLs, you want to get some domain or, or path, so you are not interested in each HTTP part. So you can kind of skip that yeah. or something like that, maybe. But I think, uh, for instance, uh, let's say if you want to, I'm trying to think of a real case. 
I have developed a, a MIME parser, which is for um, MIME messages. Usually, mm -hmm. messages can be logged. Uh, the whole stream probably gets loaded in memory in a variable. And uh, you uh, parse certain sections. And then inside, you can extract uh, details from those sections. Like, oh, I found an header. A header has, starts with the beginning of the line and the end of the line. Now, inside the header, oh, yeah. there could be some subformats that you need to extract information. And this happens a lot. I see. In, in Makes sense. Probably, I have used, I don't remember, I need to take a look, probably use like direct match and then substring. The problem is that uh, substring will extract part of the string and sometimes you don't know uh, the exact end of the part that you want to, 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 to extract. So if you could do it on the, the main original string that you extracted uh, from what you want to parse, it probably will be more efficient. You do not need to have uh, multiple variables to have portions of, that, of stuff that are in, um, variables with longer strings. That's the, the use case that I can remember for now. OK, moving on to the next topic. Now we have here just a proposal, because it seems uh, there is, I'm, I'm not sure about this, because I want to use Max. Nothing against that, I, just a maybe, maybe I can comment on it, yes. Uh, so, for example, uh, in company that we are working for, analytics, uh, we are sending uh, platform identification from devices. And yes, for previously it was OSX, but uh, recently uh, Apple officially changed it to uh, Mac, Mac OS, as we see here, and some other changes were also made to, uh, I think, Apple TV, and, and basically they standardized how uh, platform should be identified. So we had to deal with it internally to uh, accept both parameters and interpret them, interpret interpret them as one and stuff like that. So I think something similar is happening with PHP too. Yeah, I think they want to define this uh -huh. PHP OS family as the a constant that will uh, uh, be equal to OS X on past versions, but Mac OS on the current versions. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I am not familiar with this, so I hope we are interpreting this correctly. And uh, next, uh, next proposal, actually an RFC, is to have unary new coalescent operator, which would be basically to have like uh, uh, two question marks here. And this would be evaluated against the actual value if it is defined or null uh, in case of uh, uh, the variable is not defined. This, it seems to be actually interesting. I found this myself many times, but well, I just check first if it is new and then check. Actually, I'll use is set, which is uh, something that uh, exists even for a much longer time uh, to check. But yes, but, but if variable is set as no, is set would uh, return true, right? No. For because null, it's, it's variable is, no. is set. Really? I need to recheck that. Yeah, yeah no, it's, uh, PHP null is not a value. Okay. It's a, it's it's an uh, it's probably as an internal re uh, representation, but is set with not uh, uh, eval if will evaluate null or not set as true. I mean uh, false in case it is not set or it is set to null. So for for certain statements like is set, it is the same thing set to null or not being set. Anyway, the idea is to have this uh, unary operator, but it was already voted and it was not accepted. So, next, <laughs> yet another feature that would actually be useful, but it is not accepted. I'm not sure what was the argument. Uh, anyway, if you needed something like this, you already worked around yourself some other way, like 
the shaking uh, using this set. Then another topic. This is to be interesting one, but it's probably coming a bit late. It is to use PCS uh, uh, as a, a mechanism to mix C and PHP code in PHP extensions. So there are PHP extensions uh, that are written currently in C, but the idea is to allow PHP code to write those extensions so it becomes actually faster to develop uh, new, new extensions and probably uh, rewrite some existing extensions because the way they are putting this is that if you use the PHP engine now with the upcoming um, JIT engine, uh, it will probably be even faster than um, come, having some native code. I'm not sure about that, uh, but if they are claiming that could be the case, probably they know it better than me. I don't know. Arthur, so what mm. is your take on this? Well, if, if someone asks me to develop a PHP extension and I got to choose if I should develop it in C on PHP, I would choose PHP. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually there is uh, Zephyr, which is a, a, a language very similar to PHP, but it's on PHP. There are some uh, differences. There are no, like, uh, less than question mark PHP marks. They're all is PHP code. There is no embedding of, uh, of uh, data HTML in PHP code. So this is not for outputting PHP. This is more to embed, uh, create extensions in PHP, then it would compile into some C code that would be compiled by a real C compiler into a PHP extension. But the idea is a bit different. Uh, it was the one used in PHP testing, or was it something else? Uh, I don't know. For, you mean testing the PHP features? Yeah, I, th I think we also covered in some podcast about uh, writing tests for PHP, and it was also something similar language, interesting language. No, I don't know. I think PHP tests are written in PHP G format. It's just uh, a bunch of lines. Oh, yeah, true, true. True, true, true. Maybe you are thinking of something else. else. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, okay. Anyway, uh, from what I've read, oh, well, this could be an interesting idea. The, probably it will not be for PHP 7.2 because uh, we are still in half, or probably it's a bit late to start introducing these things. But I think uh, it would, could be uh, an interesting uh, Thing maybe write self uh, self uh, self written PHP like you write PHP in PHP code. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was PHP, nice. in PHP code. They say that in some cases it is faster. I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'm not getting this right, or maybe I'm getting this right, and this is a bit fantastic uh, claim. Uh, but if it's true, I'm all for it. Sounds great to be able to be able to write PHP extensions in PHP. Uh, probably this will address the need of those that want to like using coders and other types of extensions. But I don't know if the, I can think this is the purpose for now. Anyway, it is, seems to be an interesting proposal. Probably it will not make it to PHP 7 or 2, but who knows? Okay. Next topic, moving on, is uh, about uh, final variables. Final variables are those that cannot be changed. PHP has constants, but final variables are not exactly constants. Final variables are like, for instance, can be, for instance, uh, objects or arrays, I mean, non-scalar values. Uh, but for instance, you can have a constant object uh, uh, assigned to a final variable, uh, but you can still change the, the, the variable. It, so it's not uh, really a constant. It's more uh, something to, to hint that that class variable cannot be changed, uh, even if it points to an object. And the object obviously could be changed o o over time. I mean, the, the, the variables that it contains. It's a bit different. I'm not sure it, it scales about uh, about Java supporting the final keyword. I don't know. 
Arthur, do you do you use? I don't. You use JavaScript? I don't. I don't, I don't is there anything like that in JavaScript? Like no. Final. The 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 new stuff in JavaScript is let and const, and uh, let is just a new var var, but with less lesser scope. And const is uh, that you can't change the reference, but you can add new properties to the object. So it sounds like final. I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Final. Oh, no. Let is like the the local uh, local scope. Yes, yes. So if var definition was a function scope, then let can be used in a lesser scope, like in loop or, or I think even if branch, but I need to recheck that, but I'm not using that much yet, but it, it can define much lesser scope, right, uh, for variable. But is, there is also const, which and const basically a, a, that you can't change the reference to the variable if it's a uh, simple variable that you can change it, can't change its values, like if it's a number uh, or something like that. But if it's an object, you can't change the reference, but you still can manipulate uh, internal properties of the object, like delete or, or add new properties and stuff like that. So JavaScript is not there yet, I think, or did I get, did I get this right? No, it, it, it's already there, so it's already available. So I don't know if it's the same as final, but from the examples at least here, it looks like it is similar to final. Yeah, well, I don't know. People uh, like to stuff features in in a, in a languages just to make them better. But I, I was not sure since the classes were introduced in Ecclesia six, if um, all the features of classes from other languages were already permitted JavaScript. <laughs> I don't know. Let, you tell me because lately no, I have not to, done much, much JavaScript. You need to use TypeScript if you want all full OOP, I think. I don't know if TypeScript yeah. provides everything you need. Well, full OOP, does that mean uh, like Java? Yeah, <laughs> Is like Java the full OOP thing? Multiple inheritance and, and stuff like that. Yeah, not to make it really complicated. <laughs> okay, moving on. There is an, uh, another topic here. It is about the binary um, version of serialize. So instead of serializing variables to some string to serialize some binary data that would be more efficient to store. So this is a revival of a topic back in 2014 of using message packages for format for binary serialization. And it to use uh, some functions of the, uh, that PHP has for that. But this is just a discussion. I did not quite follow where it gone, but I think it, this could be interesting. So yeah, well, I think the, the the main proposal is either uh, really replace the those serialization implementations or add new ones like with different names, which I think. I think new one should be a good case. So, who wants can use the old one. Who wants can move to the new ones. And, and yeah, just and uh, uh, again, comparing with other languages, we all know that uh, JavaScript is a JSON for like forever. <laughs> and um, but uh, the popularization of JavaScript like uh, made it JSON format also popular in other languages like PHP. But uh, what about binary formats? Is there some kind of binary format? Buffer, I'm not I think. Well, like Bason? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, there is a Bason. Uh, MongoDB uses it, but I don't think JavaScript directly uses it. Yeah, but is it widely used or just a few people that are obsessed <laughs> in performance? No, uh, there are actually some other also packing, uh, packaging, like uh, formats that are shorter than JSON and stuff like that. But natively, JSON is the only one. Yeah, well, probably they will not save much space going binary. When probably most not. things are are text, text will be still text. <laughs> it will take the same space, and probably the same performance extracting the data. 
Uh, now we are going to move on to just to comment on a few articles. Um, uh, first, starting with one that was about the birthday of PHP classes that was uh, actually in last month, but I did not have the time to write either in a single post about it. And in, anyway, uh, this is the 18th birthday, like uh, I think it's June 24. We are like one month <laughs> delayed, uh, but um, last month I, I was traveling in the, in, to Canada to an event that I went there. I was not able to do much work, so I postponed it for now. Just to comment briefly about things that um, happened last year in the developments of uh, PHP classes and um, also things that are planned for the future. Just comment it briefly. Um, now, as a, as a few categories that were added more recently to implement things that are more modern to the PHP uh, community in terms of practices, like using PHP 7 and PSR um, implementations of uh, interfaces defined by the PHP standards recommendations, um, people that uh, try to define common um, APIs for things that could be implemented by multiple providers, and then you can actually pick different providers. So that there are packages that implement PSR uh, um, interfaces, and there is a category for that in PHP classes, like for also for PHP server specific packages. And there is also one that is not recent. It's about traits. In PHP, you have traits in PHP 5.4. And um, when you use traits, it makes a bit possible a different kind of reuse. So uh, there is a, a, a category in PHP classes for that. But that was something that has been implemented over time last year. Another thing that was implemented is automating the package submissions from GitHub repositories. Nowadays, if you want to import a package from that you have in GitHub and uh, want to get more exposure to it in PHP classes, you can just uh, uh, enter the URL of, of uh, the package in a repository in GitHub, and the, the, the site will automate the import. You don't have to do much these days, as in the past, that had to fill a bunch of forms now it's, things are faster uh, uh, talking also about uh, github there is an, a, a, a feature it's not a feature for for exactly for authors that want to publish packages but it's a feature for discovering new packages from authors that already published packages in the past php classes but they are probably new packages that are even more interesting and they will want them, but they did not yet import it to PHP classes. So there is a backend um, uh, interface that I, as a moderator, can look into it once in a while and find new packages that can be interesting to import. And uh, the author may give permission to have those packages be imported. So and that is okay. What I do is to actually uh, I use that interface to send an invitation, and the person, the author that gets the invitation, uh, already published some packages in the past, and it just gets a, a link to, if he clicks on that link, it starts the import of the, 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 uh, of the package, uh, like immediately, and uh, without much hassle. So the idea is to make it easy, easy to import new packages that, that can be interesting. Another uh, interesting, uh, more, more recent event, uh, uh, we have uh, sponsors, some new sponsors of the Innovation Award to get uh, users more nice prizes. One from Iron Cube. Iron Cube is uh, like Source Guardian, the other more recent uh, uh, sponsor. Uh, uh, they are they develop um, PHP products to uh, create uh, those uh, bunches of libraries of code that can be uh, encoded so they are hard 
to copy, so you don't need to, to show the, the source code, that they get your code in, encoded in a way that is hard, if possible, to... to yeah, so basically to, obfuscate. Yeah. No, it's not obfuscate, it's more than that. It just uh, includes in some binary format and probably has some encryption with some secret yeah. keys to protect the the... The, for the code so to actually be stolen, it doesn't make it impossible, it makes it much harder to protect. Anyway, the idea is to just to tell that iCube, like Source and Guardian before, is now also a sponsor of PHP Innovation Award. And probably you'll hear more about them because uh, uh, there will be a, a space that will be given for uh, all the sponsors to post an article uh, uh, in the PHP Classes blog to tell more about their products. Uh, as sort of retribution for them being sponsors of the Innovation Award. Uh, uh, that was just another another thing that was like uh, already, it's like past news. Now for the current and future um, things that will happen in HP classes, I, I have already uh, started some, something last year. It's like a new business. It's not exactly specific to PHP, but it's of the interest of many software developers that uh, are interested to have their own independent businesses writing software products uh, or maybe other businesses because they have already expanded the scope. So there will be a course probably due until, until October that will be launched. It will be very objective will be sold as a membership. Uh, you just buy, pay a subscription, you have to get access to the, all, the whole content, the whole course at once. Uh, it's not like you have to pay for additional uh, modules. You just pay a membership and you can access to the materials. And if you are happy with it, you continue to uh, 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 um, receive more content about creating uh, businesses based on products that you will create. And another thing that I have started now with a partner, Rodrigo Vasconcelos has, has, has joined me in this business and will be not only re releasing this course, but we will also be offering a free mentoring to some people, not everybody because, because we, are, we don't have unlimited time, but people that, for instance, they want to start their own businesses and they don't know where to start, uh, what they should they focus, how to discover opportunities to create products that will be will sell well, uh, how to market them, how to define your business model. All this will be provided for free. We already started with, like we have 12 um, people that are getting mentoring uh, uh, this works. It's, it's, it's free, like in the sense that people that are uh, uh, invited, they don't have to pay money. The only thing is that we will do everything that we can to make their business succeed. So by the time they, they succeed, uh, we have a, a real world case. So this is our, uh, uh, what we ask in return. This is uh, have a successful business with our help, and then we can present that uh, as a success case. Uh, this is part of our marketing plan. Uh, we are not only showing how to do it in theory, but also presenting real-world cases. Uh, this is why we are giving free mentoring. If some of you are listening to this and are interested, there is a, just use the contact link on the... Um, it is on the article, but it's, uh, it's the same as that is on the site. Just to contact me and say, oh, I'm interested in mentorship, uh, mentoring. So uh, that, uh, it will be available uh, for pure Portuguese speakers and also for English speakers later. So uh, if you are not a native English speaker uh, nor a native Portuguese speaker, you can uh, also get mentoring uh, if you are if you know how to express in English, that's all. Um, just contact me and uh, uh, so we can uh, allocate some time later when we start giving mentoring to English speakers. 
uh, it will there will be a limited of, uh, number of seats available to get this this mentoring but um, we're just announcing this so uh, if you are interested uh, you 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 will have our help uh, just express your interest as soon as possible before we run out of seats okay also another interesting thing that I have been developing as part also of this uh, course uh, not only I'm creating the course but I'm also creating a, a business from scratch that is applying the knowledge that I teach in the course so the the actual business is a SEO product it will be a, a search engine optimization tool that will help you to optimize your uh, sites your pages and this tool has already been uh, used to improve the the, the PHP classes uh, package and blog article pages um, so and I saw the results and they are impressive sorry and I saw the results after the changes and they are impressive yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, it's true. It, I already told you about that secret, <laughs> but soon it will not be a secret. This will be one of the uh, real-world cases that we use to demonstrate not just the tool itself, but the the um, uh, how, how we are creating a product that people want, and also how to market it, how to define a business model around it. Uh, as a side uh, news. I have uh, found myself, I, I've been working on this since October, but it has been giving me a lot of work, so I invited Cesar Rhodes. Cesar Rhodes uh, uh, was uh, a long time, uh, is a long time contributor of the PHP classes and the winner of the PHP Innovation Award for two years in a row. It was already several years ago, he hasn't had as much, as much time these days. But he accepted the invitation to become my partner in this business. So we are splitting the work to develop and launch this tool very, very soon, hopefully. Um, and finally, there is also an article, a, a section here that talking about PHP reference articles uh, um, uh, on important topics. And these are articles that uh, I have written or uh, were written by uh, collaborators of the site to um, talk about interesting topics like, for instance, PHP performance comparison, the best PHP IDEs comparison, best WordPress security plugins, best PHP books, which is something that we are going to comment ahead. And there is a new upcoming article on PHP source code protection solutions. Um, that is uh, being uh, reviewed and it will be released also soon. All these articles were not only written by uh, collaborators that um, were actually paid to, to write those articles, but that after that there was an effort to use, uh, to optimize them to, so they can become reference articles, they can become a very well read on Google. With um, and we we actually used the SEO tool that I'm working on. So everything is related here. And um, there will probably more reference articles being written. Uh, so you understand, reference articles are articles like, for instance, those that are on Wikipedia on certain topics. But they become a sort of authority because they answer important questions and. Um, over time, they will be well positioned in the search engines, specifically Google. There will be more opportunities to write these articles. And uh, since I don't have the time, uh, the site is paying those that are interested to write more of these articles. Uh, I have like uh, uh, new articles on a weekly basis now. Some are still being written and they were not reviewed, but will be soon. So if you are interested to 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 write these articles and be paid for that, just use the contact link that is here. And um, well, this is it for about this article. So we are going to move on to the first article, that, which is also 
one of those hackers that I just mentioned. It, in the case is this one, sorry, not this one. Not, oh, this is the one. This is an article about the best PHP books of 2017 and 2016. I, I have written this article, but in reality, it was generated by a script. I re I've written a template, and then I used uh, a script to pull some rankings from Amazon with API, uh, Amazon API, to tell which are the PHP books that are best sellers. There is some text explaining uh, the, the sections of the, 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 the article. And here we have the ranking of the, the, the books that how they are so far. This article is dynamic, so it will be updated regularly, pulling the, the bestsellers list from uh, Amazon. And uh, for now, it just contains books that are from uh, O'Reilly and Pact. And these are all that are generic books. Later, we also add books about. Uh, uh, frameworks. Frameworks is a whole topic on the PHP books. There are many, many books on the, these uh, for PHP, and uh, for that they deserve a separate treatment, as well like books on, for instance, WordPress. Um, so there will be a separate ranking for this. Um, I'm, I'm implementing this progressively uh, because I have to improve the, the script that does the the editing of this article. So, uh, um, all is coming together, but um, this is something that is being developed for a few months now, as my time permit. And at the same time, this, this article was re like released for the first time uh, on uh, June. There, it will be updated uh, regularly over time so it always has the 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 latest top php books of the moment uh and um, as i mentioned it, the the seo tool that i have been developing uh it, it, uh, it has been uh, uh, kind of helping to determine for instance what new sections the this article will have um now, for the future, besides uh, uh, books about uh, frameworks and WordPress, uh, I will also uh, try to pull information on books from LeanPub. LeanPub is an independent vendor for self-publishing authors. So they have their own separate ranking. It's not exactly available via an API, but I already talked with the Limpub people. They say it's okay to scrape their pages to get the, the best selling books. So I probably need to write a simple robot script to pull the data from their pages and show the top, uh, the best selling books, PHP books from them. Uh, I will not be able to mix the, their ranking because we don't know how it compares with the uh, Amazon ranking, but I'll, I'll do my best to make this as complete as possible. And uh, probably, probably, uh, I'll, there will also be something like this, but for JavaScript. What do you think, Arthur? Would, would that be interesting? Yeah, I think so. And I even think that JavaScript probably has more fierce competition on the book side because there yeah. are many, many frameworks, many, many books for them. I, I, I'm, I'm sure about that. Um, I also probably need to limit the number of books, but it's not like interesting to post the top 50 JavaScript books because people <laughs> will not buy all them, of them, even those that will, uh, like to, to produce, to read many books. Um, anyway, just a final note, this book, this article is written in collaboration with the actual authors of the books. So all these descriptions, like um, what uh, is the, the, the short description of the book, why this book is written and intended audience, this is all text that was provided by the authors. 
some authors that did not yet reply, you can see a message like, say, details about the book were not yet provided by the author. So, if you are probably listening to this and you are the author of one PHP book that is, uh, appears with this information, is because probably I tried to contact you or maybe I did not find the contact to the email address to find you. And uh, in that case, feel free to contact back in PHP classes so inside so I can actually make this article more complete. Uh, uh, okay, so moving on to the next articles, I guess there are a couple that you would like to comment, right, Arthur? Yes, let me share the screen. Um, yes, um, so the first article is about some specific tasks that not maybe many of us need, but if needed, it could be a headache to achieve at first, and how can PHP import Excel file to MySQL? And author is Hasib Ahmad Basil from Pakistan. And yes, basically, uh, at the first sight to parse uh, um, Excel file, the new format XLSX, uh, you can try to simply unzip it because it's zipped and then parse the XML file inside it and try to understand it. But uh, as usually it's much easier to just use the library that does what you need. So I'll there listed a couple of libraries that could help you with that. And which one of them is either to this, uh, the package here. Uh, yes, so other authors, but the package here and the basic article would cover this package more. And similarly, there are many ways to import uh, this data into MySQL. Um, because uh, XML data could be structured and, and multi-level data. It cannot be imported directly into MySQL, but you can convert it to some other format like CSV and then import it to database. There are also tools that help you with that and also other desktop software as mentioned that could do that. And uh, in the end, there is, an art, uh, there is a section uh, providing an example of how you can achieve it, it, this with a previously mentioned class that's available here. Uh, so if you need to um, import Excel file into database, you can check it out and use it. Uh, and yeah, so here is where you can download the, the, the package itself. Yeah, just on, on a side note, for instance, this article was also optimized with the SEO tool that I mentioned. Mm, uh, it's, it's very interesting. Later I'll probably talk more about this tool. The, the, this tool, this article um, is about the package that has a great demand on the site. Uh, the, the author of the article is not the author of the, the package. Uh, he was yeah. invited and paid for the, this article. And then over time, uh, after the, the article is published, it starts getting more traffic. And uh, the information about the traffic will suggest that certain keywords are better to use on the page. Mm. This has nothing to do with Excel, it's just the, the way things, <laughs> people become more interested on this. Okay, I guess yeah, you have to comment on the other or not. Yes, and another article, yes, the other article is PHP Metrics Math Library. Uh, the author is Zinsu AAAAE Moise from uh, uh, Benin. And, uh, Yes, the article actually mentions one interesting thing that uh, PHP does not have native tools to deal with matrices. Like we can store multidimensional array, two dimensional array to represent metrics, but we can't do really any operations on the matrices. Uh, and um, I was just thinking of about and apart from some specific languages, like use it as MathLab and Mathematica, uh, I can't come up really with languages that have these operations at native level implemented, only for some kind of third party libraries, even Python that is used a lot in AI and learning, machine learning, uh, where sometimes you need also uh, such operations. And uh, it also uses some third party libraries. Uh, 
so yes, so why would you need to use matrices? Usually it's something more like a linear algebra or describing a transformation and calculating uh, a transformation. And uh, yes, also um, machine learning, as I mentioned before. And um, since there is no native way to do it in PHP, there is a package that could help you with those. Uh, let me quickly load it. So uh, yes, package is provided by the same author. Um, and then, then, then he describes about his, uh, this package and what can do, can do, and like determinant calculation uh, or basic calculations like adding uh, matrices. And you can download this package also here. Uh, I think we probably will come on the package package some uh, time later because I assume it was uh, in the yeah it was in the nominees. Yeah, but that's 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 all about the article. Yeah, so this article, this one was not optimized yet <laughs> for yes. uh, for with the uh, SEO tool that I mentioned. But um, uh, probably uh, it is very recent. Uh, usually, I need to publish the article and wait a few days. It's, it's, uh, the, um, to tell about uh, to, to see what keywords it is sending traffic and one of the things that the tool suggests is like for instance these age one headers uh, i mean it is h2 and also the age one that is here and page problem, is, uh, yeah maybe problem. you can share your screen so we would sure see what uh, you're talking about yes uh, right <laughs> sorry pause uh, I, I, I was missing this elephant ear. <laughs> it's it's, it's dropping. Uh, it looks like he wants to get away. Yeah. Um, okay. I think now it's visible, but he's a bit shy. <laughs> he's, he ears are to be. This elephant is looking for a new home, so we submitted away the packages. If he doesn't behave very well, he'll be shipped. <laughs> And to the next winner in the notion of what. <laughs> uh, there's a, a, a detail here. That this uh, here, uh, it was not supposed to be bent like this. It was more like this, but it drops. Uh, okay. Still, there is a lot of competition to get one of these. <laughs> okay. What I was um, just telling. Let me. Type that headers, which headers yeah. you are usually optimizing. I'm just sharing the because the Hangouts is is it sharing? No, it's, no, it's not sharing because um, I need to share the full screen. You and need to do the inception thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, tell me about it and uh, find the screen. This is yep. one. Well, I was telling that usually it uh, um, optimizes, suggests improvements for this. Not all things can be changed because this is come from the package name. But for instance, these H2 headers, that they are very important because they hint uh, such engines that these, these are the topics that the articles are about. So, but sometimes these topics are not optimal. They are related to other uh, topics. I mean, uh, keywords that uh, have more to do with what people are, are searching for. That so it, uh, the tool suggests, oh, optimize better for this, and then you can change these headers. And later, it will even give you a score of how optimized your page is so far. So it's quite interesting. Even though for now it's just a prototype, soon it will become a beta product. For hopefully, uh, we are running uh, um, fast <laughs> and still have other, other projects to carry on, like the software product business course. But um, all things are being done in parallel. And um, as you mentioned, there are some interesting results. Probably I can show them in some charts uh, soon. Um, Okay, now we are going to comment on the latest PHP Innovation Award winners and nominees. Uh, and JavaScript. 
uh, JavaScript first, uh, as always. Despite the uh, use these days, we no longer have the JavaScript uh, in God. Unfortunately, it was taking time, and uh, unfortunately, I don't have time. Despite Arthur's wanted to continue that, <laughs> but maybe can get back to it later. Uh, but now, after the inception, <laughs> let's move on. The, the, the Innovation Award winners, like in April, we had uh, two nominees. Uh, Artus, which ones would you like to come? Which one would you like to come? On the one super interestingly sounding, yeah. but I think it would become quite uh, irritating <laughs> for the end users and it's called JS sound and it can play sounds on different events that happen on the page element like you can hover mouse or something or click on something and it could yeah. play sounds and it was developed by Dave Normington from United yeah. Kingdom and we can even show a quick example in the code so yes yeah, you can provide ID or class and the value and the sound to play for mp3 um, uh, formats and, and there are also some specify some other event and uh, it would play the sound and yes Dave was a winner of this competition yeah no prize yet mm, I don't know uh, uh, sometimes messages do not arrive or probably authors are not so interested in prizes but that's okay. So on my behalf, I'll also to uh, like to comment on another package <laughs> after the inception, which is tape, tap AI. Uh, this is a package from um, Leonardo Mauro Pereira from um, uh, from Brazil, and uh, this package. Uh, it, it kind of implements. Uh, uh, a game that requires the users to interact and, and it is interesting because it records the, the actions uh, of the user so they can be analyzed later like uh, uh, for instance if uh, you know th those eye tracking um, applications yeah. they sort of use that information well they certainly use the information about the, the events uh, related with the user movements on the screen and this is uh, a package that can be used for that. And uh, for this, um, Leonardo picked a, 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 a book from O'Reilly, a e-book uh, of, of choice. And um, this is quite interesting uh, because um, the, the package that uh, he developed can open for other opportunities, probably for a bigger package that can do other interesting things. Let's see if uh, Leonardo can out, come out of it. So congratulations for this package so far. Let's see what comes next. And since we only had two nominees, let me comment on the Innovation Award uh, rankings for 2017. So far, uh, Emil Kilas from Sweden is ahead with three packages and only 11 points. Martin Barker from, uh, uh, from the UK is uh, in second with two packages in nine points. Then Martin Latter from uh, also UK is what, uh, next with one package in five points. Uh, then in fourth place is Jeremy uh, Judo uh, from China, uh, Anders Toth from Hungary. Uh, oh, Arthur Sassin <laughs> is also in fourth with the one package and three points. Then David Normington uh, from the UK, Tom Loprod from uh, Spain, Leonardo Marper. Morais from Brazil and Emmanuel Podvan from France are tied in seventh place with two, one package and two points. As a country, the United Kingdom is ahead with five packages and 17 points, followed by Sweden with three packages and 11 points. Then comes China and Hungary in Latvia tied with one package and three points. Then France, Brazil, Germany, and Spain are tied in sixth position with one back in two points. And finally, uh, United States is in 10th place uh, with um, one package in one point. 
Now, moving on of BHP uh, for April, there are like 14 nominees. And, uh, well, let's start with the, the, the first. Uh, Arthur Switchens, would you like to comment? Okay, let me get through them quickly. Uh, so the first one I wanted to comment is a unified PHP playlist. So basically it can parse different playlist formats as you see there are ASX, M3U, PLS, XS, XSPF, etc. Uh, so it can parse this whole playlist uh, and extract information uh, like uh, title, total track count, duration, and file size uh, of each track. Uh, for each track, it uh, extracts URL, artist, song, album, basically. All this uh, uh, information that's usually stored in playlist, and so you can make a unified playlist from ex importing from different uh, players or, or playlist managers. And this package was developed by Sergey Vanyushin from Russia, and he got PHP Storm ID one year individual subscription for this package. Uh, next one, uh, when I open this package, it already asked me to enable my camera, allow to access my camera because it's PHP webcam capture, uh, save picture taken from webcam to a file or MySQL. Uh, so it was developed by Vivek Moyal from India, and yes, it does what it says. So it uses a JavaScript code to fetch an image for a webcam, and then it gets stored either on file system or stored in MySQL database. And uh, Vivek got one big LAPHP and flash mascot, so one of the elephants found a home. That's nice. Uh, I think there is, yeah, there is a demo that, that asked, but uh, I did not block it yet, and I think it re-asks me right now. So contacts is exactly right now. Uh, but yes, okay. Okay, I was trying to figure which ones I would like to comment first, but all of them are pretty interesting. So let, let's, let me start from, from the beginning after I managed to share and go through, through some inception. <laughs> Uh, is it appearing correctly now? Yes. Okay, I'll start from this uh, package, phonetic algorithms from Lars Molekum from Germany. And uh, this is interesting uh, package. You know, there are like, um, usually we use Soundex or um, uh, I forgot, Levenstein, I think, the algorithms. Anyway, this is this this package um, implements. Um, I'm not sure if it's this Soundex or a variant, but it works in different languages, at, or at least. Uh, let me check if it is more than. Oh, it's also besides English, it's also French and German, because uh, this is useful because sometimes you want to figure if the user has misspelled some word and can use Soundex find a, a sort of ash that um, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, used to compare uh, words that can be misspelled versions of other words. So this is an interesting package from, um, from Lars from Germany. Uh, it did not pick a price. Usually it doesn't pick a price, <laughs> although uh, I'll, every time I mail him, I don't get a response. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not clear that when he doesn't want the price, he can um, at least notify the site so we know. Uh, anyway, he has been publishing many, many packages. Most, many of them are nominees, like eight, eight of out of 17 were nominated. So congratulations for yet another uh, great um, package for being an innovative again like the other seven next package i want to comment is php paypal sdk except this is not coming from um, um from paypal themselves it's written by michael del sol he has written a package that can generate uh, uh classes to access uh, uh, web services based on SOAP 
and this one is actually generated by another class. But this one is interesting because it's for PayPal, it's used by many people, and um, every time they uh, update their um, WSDL file, it can generate a new version for this package, and uh, you can a call is uh, this all the, um, the, the services from PayPal and it's very interesting for this uh, uh, Mikael uh, pick uh, Zen Studio uh, uh, as a prize well for package that is all now let's review where where do we stand in terms of the PHP Innovation Award rankings so far this time Peter Call reached the first position with so many innovative packages and tied with uh, Christian V, as we mentioned in the, the PHP podcast. Christian has, uh, has died, unfortunately. Uh, he, he was doing very uh, good so far. He was tied in the first place with 73 uh, points, uh, except that Peter had nine packages and Christian had only five. So in third place, we have uh, Nahi Binazar with three packages and 50 points, followed by Sergei Vanushim from uh, uh, Russia Russian. with five, five packages and 49 points. Lars Molikum with four packages and 35 points is in fifth. Dave Smith uh, is in sixth with two packages and 31 points. Vish Davishev, no, Vish Sadev from India is in seventh with two packages and 27 points. Jel Sabrecht from uh, Belgium with uh, in two, um, ninth, eighth place with eight, two packages and 25 points. Salas Asharia from um, Australia with, is in ninth place, tied with Alessandro Quintanilla from uh, Quintagliani from Italy with one package and 21 points. By country, France is still ahead with eight packages and uh, 100 points uh, is, is followed by United States and India with 75 points. France is still ahead despite um, Christian V unfortunately will no longer be able to participate but there are other French people that can help France still go ahead. Uh, let's see how this goes but after um, United States and India, there is Hong Kong with um, um, nine packages and 73 points, uh, basically all from um, Peter Carl. And then there is Germany in fifth place with six packages and 54 points, uh, in, uh, followed by Bangladesh with three packages and 50 points. And then Russian Federation with five packages and 49 points uh, is in seventh, eighth. Is Italy with three packages and 48 points. Pakistan is uh, ninth and uh, uh, with four packages and 47 points. Then United Kingdom in, in tenth with two packages and seven points, 27 points. Well, anyway, with this, we practically in this podcast, we had a kind of run <laughs> to talk about all these topics. Um, so for now, that's all. Uh, uh, bye. Bye.